the written word can also be turned into movies. And here, it all goes wrong. I have been sat next to a Scotsman all night. <laughs> now, I am sure that most of you will agree with me that Mel Gibson should have been executed <laughs> for making the disastrous comedy Braveheart. Now, barely a day goes by in the Tower of London without some demented Scot, and I'm not saying all Scots are demented, <laughs> it's just the ones I meet, who demand to know, Where did you keep William Wallace? He was my forefather. Check out my blue face and the family resemblance. That's just the women. I don't understand a word the blokes are. <laughs> now, for years, I've been telling people that Richard III was chopped up on the battlefield of Bosworth, thrown into the River Saw, because that was the local legend. Thousands of us believed it. We were all wrong. Richard III had spent most of the last 700 years under the social services car park in Leicester. <laughs> Those DNA markers will be present on those bones in Westminster Abbey, if and only if they are his nephews. Well, here's the really interesting thing. We're not going to check. Because if it isn't them, we've got a problem. <laughs> you see, who they are becomes irrelevant. Where the princes are becomes all important. And if it is true that they were spirited away to Ireland, the land of my fathers, then it is entirely possible that I... <laughs> William Callaghan of the Fighting Callaghans of Cork could now be the true king of England. No, no one wants that. James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, was found hiding in a ditch, rather ignominious for a man who would be king, um, about a week later. And he was brought to the Tower of London. He'd already been tried for treason and sentenced to death in his absence. He spent two nights at the Tower. He was taken out to Tower Hill. You may know the tube station there. Tower Hill was the site of the public execution scaffold. On the day, thousands of bloodthirsty people, not unlike yourselves, gathered round <laughs> this wooden platform, and it was covered with straw, there to absorb the blood. And amidst this would stand a man clad in leather. A leather mask covered half his face. It's always been possible to buy this kind of clothing in London. <laughs> I'm sure some of you know where. <laughs> Tower of London, first zoo anywhere in Britain. How's the Royal Menagerie? No one knows why we started a raw menagerie, but we do know when. In 1254, for no reason ever recorded, the King of France sent England an elephant. <laughs> the English had never seen one before, and I suspect the army spent a few days staring at it, waiting for the French to come out. <laughs> we don't know a lot about animals, but we know our warfare, and we weren't going to fall for that Trojan elephant trick. No, sir. <laughs> I was a medic to the paratroopers, and I was a medic to special forces. Um, but that said, um, you know, it was their job to kill people. I have killed people, but it was negligence, and um, <laughs> I'm kind of over it now. We now come on to social media. <laughs> uh, social media is uh, a big thing, and, it, I was a, a, uh, and it's, it's the new history. There has never been a time when mankind has more has been more explored and exposed by way of, of literature and writing and, and photography. We are being so well recorded at the moment. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, these things, they're all out there. It becomes history. Everyone now with an iPhone, a Twitter account, a Facebook account is becoming a social historian. They are putting out their own social histories. Oh, I fancy a Jaffa cake. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> History, you must remember, is not what it was. It is what it is. It is the story of the past written by the people who win. This explains why French history books are very thin. <laughs> and they've lots of big pictures. <laughs>